Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be giving you a plant nursery tour here at Susi Garden. I will have a separate episode where I'm going to be interviewing her regarding plant exports because she's an expert in that field. And I know that plant exports from Indonesia is something that a lot of you guys are inquiring about. So please do check out that episode. But in today's video, I'm just going to be walking through and looking around at the plants and giving you some care tips and species IDs. Oh my goodness, it's such a hot day, I'm burning up. But here, I believe these are Tradescantias. I believe the locals call them Adam Hawa. It's a very, very common landscaping plant and it's very, very affordable. I love the frosted purple look. This is a really pretty common plant for landscaping. And coming for this is the parking lot, by the way. And going further on, this is the Epipremnum uh, Aurium, golden pothos, that's allowed to climb up. It hasn't fenestrated yet, but if you let it continue to climb up, it will fenestrate. Look at how fat the stems are. Very, very pretty. And then let's see, as we come in, there's some Dracaena, Song of India, also a common plant. And this one is sprouting babies right here. Look at that. Hello. I love it. It's got its top cut off, which is why it's sending signals down to let the bottom nodes, uh, what do you call this? Uh, spurred in growth very pretty they like full sun these guys and some direct sunlight and over here I do see a peace lily here and I see some variegated peace lily and these guys are just living in direct sunlight that's amazing and more epipremnum aureum these guys are just hanging down see if you let them hang down the leaves just get smaller and smaller if you want them to get bigger you let them climb up let's see if those have fenestrated nope <laughs> not yet so fenestration means this those are split leaves that they will have eventually this is a cute little staghorn fern just hanging out here cute and then as we walk in there is a massive massive bush of calathea i believe if i'm wrong this is a calathea species uh, related to the banana i really love seeing these in landscaping very very pretty, it's got a blue hue to it and I believe if you started planting one of these they will get big rather quickly if you give them full sun a lot of fertilizing, good care and then they will also sprout a lot of babies from below so this will bush out rather quickly <laughs> all you need is just one plant to start with this is one that is just <laughs> look at how it, how it glows in this direct light very very pretty it looks see what's inside oops <laughs> and this plant is actually flowering i guess or maybe it has flowered but this is what it looks like a little bit insignificant but still this is a whole new world <laughs> to discover very very pretty moving on here this is a I believe a paparobia scandens usually we have them variegated but these ones are the real green ones and this is an apischia and more Tradus Conti, this is Tradus Conti as Zabrina, the most common ones. Apparently they can take some direct sunlight. This is Apischia too, look at that. It's living in direct sunlight. This is surprising me, I did not know that they can take so much... Look at that, they can take full sun. <laughs> Who knew? And this looks a lot like peppermint, <laughs> but I, I don't know what this is. And I don't think it can smell. Nope, I don't smell anything. Moving on down here, this is a massive Anthurium crystallinum just kind of hanging out here. Let's see, that's the back. Look at how pretty that is. <laughs> it's so ready to be propagated. And then right up here, this is a massive bush of staghorn fern. I really need to know my species. I don't know them very well, but this one is probably aged really well because it is looking <laughs> rather big. <laughs> It's like so many layers, or maybe there are a few plants in here. Yeah, I see a few plant, uh, clumps in here. That's another clump. This is so pretty. I can't wait for mine to get this bushy. I am really enjoying this walk to get to the nursery area. This is a Dracaena, if I'm not wrong. And I really want to walk here because this is, I believe, Bougainville. And it's so pretty. Look at that. Oh my goodness, 
This place is so peaceful, it's quiet, we've got ducks over there. We've got, I don't know, are these crickets? I don't know what this sound is. This is looking a little sparse. I guess maybe it's the wrong season for it. Um, yeah, I think they lost all the leaves. I know nothing about these plants, but they're all over Singapore. <laughs> if you visit Singapore, they're basically highway plants. They're very, very pretty. Hmm. And I believe that's a dead end, but there are some more plants over there. So nice enjoying this day actually <laughs> i hope we see more plants in there that are quite nice now here's a tree that i would never think to look twice until i saw down below so these are vines from the tree look at that so this is the stump and then these growths are coming out from it and they're looking so very beautiful oh my gosh this really reminds us that we need to sometimes slow down and appreciate the, the little things in life. Look at this one. So yeah, that new growth, I'm all for it. Look at how beautiful that is. Hmm. Continuing on with our journey, I believe this is the Song of Jamaica. This is uh, in a Dracaena family. I quite like how they are bare stem in the bottom. I guess they do fall off like that and then the new leaves just keep coming up on top. This is very, very pretty. I have one at home, I believe. It's um, gone rather large, but I could do like them at this size where you can actually see them. They're kind of just a little bit below eye level. And I believe this is it. I think this is Susie Garden. We're here because this is the courtyard. I have seen this on Instagram, but haven't been there in person. That's uh, some white Bougainville situation happening here. I don't mind these plants at all. They're actually quite beautiful <laughs> when they flower. But I'm really terrible with flowering plants. I always kill them so quickly. And I have a feeling that these get big really quickly too. Look at that. Very, very nice. Maybe someday if I ever have a botanical garden or, or a massive mansion, which I never will do because I like tiny homes. <laughs> yeah. We'd definitely love to take on the Bougainville one day. And let me see. That's the hut. Or a prefabricated house looking thing. It's really pretty. I can't wait to get inside. I'm very excited right now. But I want to hang out here for a minute with you guys and kind of take in all of this because I'm having a super stressful few months and this is kind of refreshing being here alone filming and i hope that you guys are having a good day right now and ahead of you hmm i see now where all that bougainville is coming from it's coming from over there let's check it out yeah we'll come here later but let's check out the outside for a bit i see some adeniums here I've only got one of these. I'm trying to figure out their care. Not easy when I got it. Mine just kind of shed so many leaves. I just thought it's not gonna make it, but it, so far so good, but I kind of ignore it. So I should pay more attention to it. And I one day will, I promise you. And I'll do a video on these guys soon. This is a little bit of a bigger adenium. Very pretty. These are very, very pretty plants. Look at those roots. No, not roots, I guess. These are trunks, but they look like roots. That is so pretty. I feel like I'm in France or something. <laughs> oh my goodness. And there's more of these flowers. They open like that from the top. And this is what they look like from the front. Very beautiful. Let's have a look, shall we? Excuse me as I study you. <laughs> they all flower very differently. I know I tried to shop for these online and all you see are the flower pictures. <laughs> because the leaves, I guess, they look the same no matter what flower you get. But yeah, it's the flowers that are different. So beautiful. The design on these. 
so stunning. Oh, there's a lot more of them over here. <laughs> Hello everyone. This one is about to flower, so guess that's what they look like. At this stage, if I, this is mine, I would be so excited, so excited to see this. And then they'll just turn into all that. Very pretty. I have a feeling they are from Southeast Asia, but I could be wrong. Look at that, very nice. And this is a red one, which I haven't seen earlier. Very beautiful red. Look at that. <laughs> so nice. Not only do you appreciate them for the flower, but also their form, because each of them really have their own form. Look at this one. I don't know what this is, but all I want to do is drink whiskey every night and just stare at it. <laughs> so nice. And I guess they like full sun, judging from their growing conditions here. There's some more plants out there. They're pretty random, so I'm not gonna go there. There are some bonsais over here. This is looking pretty. Uh -huh. I wish to get into bonsai someday, but they take up so much patience and you really need to control uh, apical dominance really well to, to kind of shape them and, and guide them. Now these flowers are just looking so pretty. Look at that. Oh my god, this flower has flowers on it. <laughs> so pretty. Hi, I don't know what you are. I want to cut you up and bring you home and put you next to my bathroom. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Very pretty. Oh, this is pretty nice landscaping. Look at that. Very, very pretty. I feel like I'm on a mini vacation. Speaking of vacation, I'll be going to Bali next month. So there'll be a lot of contents on Bali. This is a beautiful Schaeflera arboricola, Farigata. Very cute. They love direct sunlight. Probably full sun. And this is funky. I have not seen this one before. But it's been getting chewed up by worms. Let me find a good specimen. This is a pretty one. Look at them. They're just kind of contrasting each other, these two. Uh, but let me look up close at these. This is really, really pretty. You guys, it's just looking very nice. Love the new leaves. It's like super rubbery, shiny, pretty. This little corner is so cute right here. Look at that. There's a little restaurant there. There's a cafe or a grill. So this is a grill here. Maybe this is where I'll have dinner tonight. And this place would be so pretty at sundown. So you know what? I may do that. I may stay here till nightfall just to show you what it looks like at nighttime. And let's look down here to see what we have. That's an Anthurium Magnificum. These are some Anthuriums as well. And I believe that's a... Oh, um, no, that's a Pasizanum, probably. Some beautiful... Bromeliads in here. There are quite a few of these, the dark ones. And this is a beautiful alocasia. This is not the best leaf. Let me show you this other one. Beautiful. It's so dark. And the leaves are actually very light. Maybe this is a new leaf. That's why it's got a really nice black stem to it. Very pretty. Oh, and the back looks so nice. Let's look at you. Uh, sorry, there are things in the way, things in the way, get out. That is very nice. Very pretty. And this is a really big philodendron Florida <laughs> ghost. Look at that. Oh. Ah, this is the uh, Calocasia, I believe. Not an Alocasia. Calocasia, if I'm not wrong, it's called the mo Mojito. I could be wrong. But love. Hang on, let me clean you up. Come on, shoo, shoo, shoo. Look at that little bit of pink dot there. That is so nice. Yeah, this is a really beautiful plant. It's like electric green, kind of. I have a feeling that these guys want a little bit more uh, direct sunlight than they're given here in this shady pot. Hello. It's just so pretty. Every time I see one of these around, they just make my day. The shape is just so beautiful, so elegant. Look at those lines there. And this is quite an affordable philodendron. 
And there's some Agonema Pictum tricolor here. This is, I believe, a variegated Hamalomina. Some Crystallinums. And Begonias, that's a Alocasia Amazonica. I guess these plants are considered rare in in some places, but then they're considered very common here. There's a Philodendron Mayoi here, looking some around. Oh, this is really pretty bromeliads. Oh, let's get this leaf out of the way. And get you a close-up. Beautiful. They're supposed to be easy to care for. I haven't really gotten into my bromeliads yet, but one day I will. And these are just some alocasias. I guess these are the yellow variegated alocasias. They're not white, like the ones we normally see. And maybe they're not the mycorrhizas. And that's the Anthurium magnificum. If you like big Anthuriums that are easy to care for, this is your pal. It's not expensive either. And look at that massive, massive clump of alocasia. I believe this is the mycorrhiza, but I could be wrong. I'm not very good with my alocasias, but this is so big. I want to take a nap on this thing. Look at that. <laughs> oh man. And there's some beautiful plumerias here that are in bloom. Look at that. I really appreciate them. Look at that. New leaf. Very, very beautiful. This looks like an alien world. And what's even more exciting about them, look at that. It's flowering and the flower looks like this. And of course, all of them have different uh, flower colors and uh, <laughs> combinations. I'm not very familiar with this plant. But I can tell you one thing about these plants. You need to have excellent pest control on these because they are extremely, extremely, extremely pest prone. If I can vote the most pest prone plant in the world, it would be this one. But look at that. That really is such a beautiful architecture right there. And there's a Ficus elastica here. Hmm. Look at this. They really respond well to pruning and they will branch out like crazy. I actually got mine. Um, mine was just a cutting kind of like this. Like if you cut this and I've grown it from, uh, from that cutting. But if you want it to look beautiful like this, you definitely need to keep pruning them off so that they'll branch out into trees. Very pretty. Look at that. Normally the mealybugs would like to hang out here and then it will kill the plant very very quickly. But oh my gosh, I'm, I'm obsessed with this. I was gonna give mine up because I'm in the middle of the move, but now I think I may take mine with me. <laughs> when down here I see a, a beautiful palm. This. It's got this <laughs> sort of milky way look I forgot the name of these but this a lot of youtubers are talking about these lately I just can't remember for the life of me what these are I believe they can get rather big too uh, for palms so yeah this is quite nice there's some peace lilies down there and that's a massive pot of uh, what do you call it Stromancy Tristar mine is so tiny and it did not know that they can get to this size oh my god I did not know that they can get so big and they do put out these runners. Look at that. I did not know that they do that. This is like a, a Tenanti type of behavior. Oh my gosh, I'm completely blown away. And this is a beautiful new leaf. This is a Thematophyllum by Pinedifidum. Very nice. But this area is a little bit dark for it. This guy actually likes full sun. But yeah, it's a little bit shaded. If you look up above, this is way too shady for it. And there's some blood banana, blood bananas here. Very, very pretty. I believe the, the fruit would have these patterns on it as well. Look at that. That looks like someone's painting. Very pretty. I guess I am going into this shop. Over here, there's some little fishies over there. All right, so this is a beautiful coffee shop. Uh, there's the Biscadia Oyanta Variegada here. I really love these hangers, they're quite pretty. Quite beautiful hangers. And this roof is just so nice. Green. 
Yeah. There's some philodendron Brazil up here. Some emedium, medium silver. And I believe they have a lot of pottery in here. I think I know the Instagram handle of this. I did follow them. Uh, Studut Oma or something, I can't remember. I will include the link on the, on the screen. So in case you want to order from them, I don't know if they ship internationally. Uh, they do have more designs than this, if I'm not wrong. There's some Talansias living here. Hello. It's uh, Orbifolia, more Talasias here. Just some plant care stuff down here. I guess that's a view of the outside. It looks so nice. Very peaceful in here. This is a really good place to come out for a date, date night. And this is a waru or hibiscus dorigata. Probably doing really well here, getting a lot of light by this window. This is a, I think, Santosoma or Caladium lindenia, lindeniae. I still haven't figured out mine yet. I think it likes a little bit of a brighter light. And yeah, I will do a video on these as soon as I get their care right. But this is pretty massive leaves. The fact that they're in such a uh, wide cultivation here means that they're actually supposed to be very easy to grow and fast growing as well. But mine is still a struggle plant. This is looking nice, so very inspiring. And on this shelf here, there are some pots and there are some plants. Uh, golden potos, these are some variegated Thanksgiving cactus. I wish mine looked this good. I kind of neglect mine. So, yeah, look at that, it's pretty. Uh, some kadaka. So I was just offered a free drink and it was so delicious. Thank you guys so much here. One of the perks of being a YouTuber, I guess. And look at where I'm sitting. This is just so nice, you guys. It is so peaceful. There's chickens. And there's people just doing their daily chores. Very nice. Come here on the weekend, you guys and spend some time here. This is super nice. All right, so on with our tour. Here are some Skindapsis. This is the Argerius. It's very hard to find here in Indonesia. I know that it's very common overseas. Some regular, I believe this is a Tubii Moonlight. And these are some cute chili. It looks like edible chili. Look at that, it's a like goth chili. And the leaves are actually a little bit black. This is actually quite nice. I don't mind having these grown in my care. Except that they'll probably be very pest prone. That's my guess. <laughs> I don't know what these are, but they are very pretty. This is another common plant. Very nice thin stems and very kind of splotchy leaves. Philodendron linnet. This is a plant that is very close to my heart. Yet somehow I managed to kill mine a few times and just overwatered them. But yeah, I will 
start caring for them right after I move. Okay, the Dendron Mayoi. There's some silver swords back here. This is a juvenile form. They can get much bigger than this. Mine is about this size still and hasn't gotten bigger. I think I need to give mine more light. Some Epipremnum Enjoy, Pothos Enjoy. Look at these Sagonimas here. And that's the flower. <laughs> Hello, you naughty. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know my Aglunima names, but I appreciate all of them. They're all different, they're all beautiful, and sometimes the difference is very subtle. But then it's just an entirely new species altogether. And there's a lot more of them here. I don't even mind this one. This is uh, almost like a full green. But I did hear that those that are not very colorful, like that pale like this, that they're very, very slow growers. That's what I heard, but I don't know yet. <laughs> One day I will master my Agonimas. I want to collect them all. They're just so pretty. And there are some more over here. I believe this is another common one. This is the Donna Carmen. Very beautiful leaves. And propagation of Agonimas are so fun, you guys. They're very addictive. I will have a few videos for those in my channel soon. So I can spread some of their addictive properties to you guys. This is so pretty. Look at this. They also like more light than we give it. I know that in the West, a lot of YouTubers are saying that these guys are low light plants, um, but they're not. They actually prefer a little bit of direct sunlight. Look at this one, it's flowering. Very nice. This is so pretty too, look at that. It looks like it's reflecting light upwards. <laughs> I just got free food. I got free food, thank you! <laughs> and uh, there are some mass mar Marble Queen, Paltos, and more Marble Queen. These are very nice. I don't see enough of these around. They're actually very pretty. And some Monstera Peru, Carcentianum. Um, very, very slow growing plants. This is very interesting. This is a Dracaena. I have this one. This is very nice. But this is cute. Look at the colors. Hang on, let me show you the inside. Oh, wow, <laughs> this is so pretty, you guys. Oh my gosh. What are you? Look at this. Oh my gosh, the white is very extreme and the white is very clean. See, it's almost translucent too. Look at that. This is a really beautiful Dracaena. So there are two greenhouses here. This one houses rare plants and that one has more common plants. And of course, I'm gonna start right here because I don't know, I like common plants a lot more. But of course, a lot of you guys are gonna stick around because the rare plant is also interesting. And this is an interesting, hang on, let me look at this. This is a huge Monstera Deliciosa. Look at how big that is. I have seen in Bali ones that are like four times this size, but this is very impressive. And, oh my gosh, look at that, look at that. <laughs> that is ridiculous, oh my goodness. All right, right, okay, I digress. Let's get started. There are a lot of really pretty azonimas here and they're all flowering, flowering. I wonder what signals them to flower at the same time. But they're having the time of their lives out here. So when you go in, Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I guess I'm gonna be here for a little while. Look at that. That's left. And this is the right. So I'm gonna start, I guess, right here. And this is a squamiferum. I can already tell from the fuzzy patio. And, ooh, hang on. Uh, they have the species ID and price tag here. This is amazing, you guys. No one else does this in Indonesia. Normally you have to ask for the species and you have to uh, negotiate for the prices. So this is really good that they have that here. But keep in mind that uh, prices of plants do change very frequently. So when you come back another month, the prices may be different. This is an interesting philodendron. Interesting. Let me see what this is. Philodendron Bobsy. I'm going to learn so much from here because now there's a, the plant IDs here. That's amazing. This is a pretty one. Philodendron callosum. Very pretty. Look at that. It looks like a leather. Look at how that catches light. This is very, very pretty. Oh my gosh, I want to turn this into a wallet. <laughs> it's 
some Calatheus over here. Very nice. Oh, wow. Oh, I like how tidy this is. This is what, definitely one of the tidier places that I've seen. There's some Aglonema. Take some tricolors there. They're all flowering too. The plants here are so happy and it makes me so happy. <laughs> and this one is interesting as well. Let me pick this up. This is a Philodendron Texlanum. Look at that. This is very pretty. And the price is not so bad either. It's not cheap, but this is not a common Philodendron. I love the growth pattern on these. And let me see how much Orbifolias go for here because these used to be very expensive. Oh, they are still a bit expensive. It's 750,000 Indonesian rupiah. Oh my goodness. They used to be very hard to find, but now more people have them. But I guess the prices hasn't fallen yet. And this down here, these are rows and rows and rows of fiddly fake babies. I believe this is the Bambino variety. Very cute. I love it. Look at that. <laughs> Welcome. And let me see if I missed anything up here. This is very pretty. This is like a really chubby, wide relief. More squirmy ferns. Squirmy ferns are super interesting. I really just love their patios. They look really good when there's a little bit of direct sunlight hitting them in the morning, for example. So yeah, and their duplicates. This is that same philodendron, the Tuxlanum. This is the bigger variety of them. Interesting. I definitely want one of these, but not today. <laughs> I'm in the middle of moving, so I have way too much things to handle right now. So this is buying plants is definitely not on my list. This is so pretty. Oh, with that little bit of red on it. Look at that. This is a piece of art. These are Caladiums. I don't see them very often. Uh, Sally told me that this is actually a, a common plant section, but this is not common at all. Look at this. This looks like Indonesian batik for textiles. This is really pretty, really beautiful Caladiums. And here's the name. Caladium Lance, Lance Wharton and couldn't find a name on that one and there's some little ones too here this Caladium Amira this is nice so this is like your white, white Caladium but it's got a little bit of pink spots in them it's called <laughs> it's called the Caladium Cranberry Star very rightfully so <laughs> there's just a lot of really pretty Caladiums here and I just want to remind you guys that uh, Sally here, uh, Susie Garden, they do export. They are also very reliable in exporting. So if you see any of these plants here that you like, feel free to reach out. And they also have websites and Etsy shop, if I'm not wrong. This is a uh, Alocasia Bambino. They're quite hot item right now. Let me see how much these are. Yeah, it's a, I got mine for about 450, about three months ago. So this is pretty good price here. This is 350. But mine is a little bit bigger when I got it. But these guys grow rather fast, so I don't mind it when they're so small. More Calatheas. Uh, Alocasia Silver Dragon. Let's see how much these are, if there's a price on it. Nope. These are not the most expensive Alocasias and not the most difficult. Do recommend this if you like one of these uh, Jewel Alocasias. This is one that's good to start. And also this one, the Alocasia Cuprea. This is also a good Alocasia to begin, to, to start with. But they're not, uh, they don't remain small. Like these jewel alocasias and uh, uh, black velvet and all, they stay rather small, but these get pretty big. This, I believe, is the homalumina, if I'm not wrong. That's the tag. Very beautiful, these. Look at that. And then this is that aglonima that we saw earlier. This is very pretty because this tricolor is very very evenly distributed and all of them look a little bit different mine doesn't have as many whites but they're quite random and of course we have a lot more staghorn ferns over here some anterior magnificum some crystallinums they're very very common here and these are uh, uh, what is it called clarinerviums with the heart-shaped leaves this is how you tell them apart this is a clarinervium this is a crystallinum. And clarinariums don't grow so well here for some reason. They're quite slow. 
and somehow they, they stay pretty small here. And that is a massive philodendron tortum. I did not know that they can get this big. Bam! Oh my goodness. This is huge. And I love to watch them unroll. I cannot wait for mine to get this big someday because they really put on quite a show. Very nice. And there's some photonias down here. Soon to be dead photonias, I guess. They're impossible to keep alive. Cryptansis. There are some succulents here. Florida ghost. This is a homalumina. Very pretty. Let me look at the inside. Putting out a sheath here. I love looking at that. Whenever I see that in plants, it bring it gives me like a renewed hope and faith in humanity. <laughs> Plumenii, I believe this is the dark form, the dark face. Uh, some kind of philodendron. I don't know what this is, but this is pretty with the lobes. <sighs> And then Philodendron Prince of Orange. This is common overseas, but here they're a little bit pricey. Um, very nice though, look at that. Some Fingoniums, let me look around. This is also interesting. This looks like the uh, Philodendron Jungle Boogie, and this is the fat version of the Jungle Boogie. So I don't know what this is called. Hang on, I just saw that. There's water pooling in there, oh my god. Uh, I should get someone to help it. <laughs> I guess something is blocking its, uh, its drainage hole. So I'm gonna tell them about it because I don't wanna let this plant die. Oh my god, it's so heavy. Yeah, I'm gonna put down my camera, I'm gonna do it because this is too heavy, I'll be right back. Moving on, here are some philodendron, marks, variegated, where's the whiskey eye? It's been propagated, I guess. Gloriosums, I see so many of these, but never tired of them. Some philodendron mayo eyes here. I wonder if I can see prices. Nope, I can't see the price. They used to be pretty affordable. I don't know, don't know what the uh, pandemic has caused the prices <laughs> these days. This is Birkins. They will get uh, their variegation naturally as they age. It's not a matter of sunlight. They don't need bright, bright light to bring out the variegation, they just need to be at the right age. Uh, oh, this is a really, really interesting philodendron. Never seen this one before. It's the, wait a minute, this is the microstigtum? I have that. And does not look like they, my, my microstigtum does not have this uh, ridges on them. Mine is flat and thick and rubbery. I have a feeling this is, this is mislabeled, but this is still pretty. This is probably more rare than the microstigtum. Oh my goodness, they just have a lot of these corniferums and I just have to greet each one of them. How can you not? Look at that. <laughs> so let me see what else there's, there's here. There are a lot of just green philodendrons everywhere. And there's that Sonanti Satosa. A lot of them here. Not the easiest to care for. And this Begonia Breverimosa. Massive, look at that. That's, <laughs> that is pretty big. And I want to hang on, bring your eyes to this whole place so you can absorb it, absorb its energy, how nice and quiet it is in here with all these plants. I feel like I'm a yoga instructor right now. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out, and child pose. This is a stingray, Alocasia stingray. Very prone to spider mites. Do not recommend this for beginners. But somehow, a lot of beginner plant parents like to buy this plant. I don't know why. Something about them draws them to new plant parents. But they're not easy at all. I mean, this is a very, very underrated plant. This is an Amplicimum. It's an Epipremnum. And it wants to climb up. Look at how pretty the leaves are. Look, and it's not focusing. All right, hope this is better. Okay, look at how pretty this is. Oh my God, I imagine if you have like a few of these vining up next to each other, creating this texture. This is quite nice. Very easy to care for a plant. 
can withstand a variety of conditions, but they do need something to climb onto. And then let me see, there are a lot of Syngonium, Syngonium, this is the pink one. I'm not very good with Syngonium names. But they do fetch quite a bit of price, they are uh, the rare ones at least. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about the Syngoniums. So here's just some of them for your eyes to feast on. This I believe is a mojito, it's probably reverted a little bit. Ficus Elastica Taneki. Or this is the ruby maybe because it's got a little bit of red tint to it. This is the... Uh, one of my favorites actually. I love this in going with Three Kings, but I could be wrong. And that one too. Look at how pretty they are. This is just the right kind of variegation. Very nice. Um, baby Florida Ghost. <laughs> they can get huge, but the little ones are cute too. And this one is particularly weird because when they're small, usually they don't have this mature shape. They look different when they're younger, but this one's a small leaf but with a mature form. <laughs> You're a weird one. <laughs> Syngonium, this is a pretty one. Beautiful. I can't tell them apart. Uh, just They're just pink in general. This one is interesting. This may be a weed, I think, but look at the color on these. And look at that, the edge of the leaves. It's got these spikes on them. This looks unreal. This looks like an 80s painting or something. <laughs> Let me see, where's the pot? Yeah, it's from over there. I don't know what this is. But I think it wants to be watered. <laughs> it looks a little bit limp. <laughs> I wish I had a bucket of watering can with me so I can go around and water plants as I'm doing these tours. This is weird. <laughs> this is a new Syngonium. I haven't seen these before. Very nice. And that's the same philodendron that we saw earlier. That was the smaller form. Can't remember the name. Um, this is what it looks like when it gets bigger, I guess. Hmm. All right, so we're in the rare plant section now. So I'm actually going to be back here uh, another time because I had an episode idea for the Indonesian Independence Day. I wanted to do an Indonesian plant. So Sally's going to help me pick out some plants from Indonesia that are unusual. So look forward to that episode that's coming soon. This is Hamalomina variegata. Very sought after now. Very difficult to find and very expensive. They used to be very inexpensive. Look at that. This is why they're so expensive. They're so beautiful. And Hamalominas also flower very beautifully. This is a tomatophyllum. Variegated tomatophyllum. I believe this is called... I don't know. What it's called? Bax? Baxo. <laughs> but this is expensive. This is 100 million Indonesian rupiah. So you can buy a car with that. Some uh, biliotai, variegated. Okay, this is not big at all, but it's got some really interesting plants here. This looks like a, it's a Modophyllum sprucianum, but it could be. Ah, that's the. Uh, it's called the Sonora variegata. This looks. This is the Java Beauty. Six million. Very expensive, but I think quite worth it. They are quite beautiful. This is the William C. I. Variegata. Rare aeroids are definitely a thing here. There are a lot of aeroid societies and people that seek them, and I'm not one of them. That's why I'm not really familiar with a lot of the aeroids. But we just had an aeroid competition, a national aeroid competition here that I wasn't even aware of, that I should have gone, but uh, a lot of YouTubers here did videos on there. But I guess we're all social distancing at this time, so I'm, I'm glad that I'm not uh, out in the crowd. This is an Anthurium Vetria, and look at that, it's flowering. Oh, I wish somebody can, uh, can harvest this. <laughs> this plant can fetch quite a bit of money. Oh my goodness. Very nice. This one is very expensive. This is 5 million. Uh, Philodendron Campos... Com, camp, campos Porton... <laughs> Help me, I can't pronounce this. This is too long. 
It looks like a hybrid. I want to say it's a hybrid, but I'm not sure. This looks like a hybrid too. Uh, doesn't have a name. Or maybe these two are the same things. Could be the same things. Brantianum. I'm really happy that they're becoming quite common these days. Uh, what is this? These are so rare, I don't even know what these are. This is a sub... This is the subhastatum. Oh yeah, with the underside. Yeah, I did not notice this. Very pretty. Uh, it's on my wish list, but not for now. I'm not gonna get this. But yeah, this is looking very nice. Philodendron Birkin for the ghost. Silver sword, we've seen those. Oh my gosh, I should turn myself around. First of all, this is a beautiful pink princess, but I'm over them. They're, they're cute, don't get me wrong. And, they, they here they have really good variegations over here so if I were you I would buy ones with good variegation because my, well, I went cheap with them I bought some with very little variegation and I just did not get any pink on them so do invest when you're buying the pink princess oh my god okay back to my excitement this is an interesting section what is this these are skin depths you guys Oh my goodness, it's, yeah, it's, it's SP, so I don't think they know what it is yet. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I, I think I peed a little bit. <laughs> Should have worn diapers. But, oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, this is 7 million, you guys. That's like double the minimum wage here. <laughs> Oh my god, this is pretty. This is a... Uh, oh, this is new. I thought this is just a regular skin dapsis, but on here it says it's the official... Officic, officinalis variegata. Damn. Hot damn. This one is so pretty too. Look at this. Oh my gosh. What are you? What are you? What are you? Uh, and I thought I had a lot of skin dapsis because I am actually collecting them right now. They're going to be the next eight plants. Not to say that I collect eight plants because they're going to be eight plants, but because skin dapsis are very easy to grow and they're beautiful and they trail beautifully and they also can climb up things beautifully. They can become this shingling pattern when you let them climb up uh, poles and such. So, wow. Oh my gosh, what is this? I think this is a Rephidophora. Yeah, mm, very cute. <laughs> Look at how small this one is. That's a hum a hum this is a Homalomino species. My goodness, this looks like a Calathea Thai beauty. <laughs> but it is in fact a Homalomino because look at the flower. This is not a Calathea. <laughs> when you think you know everything, you don't. This is a baby. Philodendron, Burlamar Sandesi. I flipped my leaf up, the one at home, I just kind of flipped it up and broke. <laughs> and it was from a big leaf too, so... Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> this is a beautiful homolomina that's variegated, it's called the Stardust. And look at the price! Doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't even know how many zeros that is. <laughs> and this, I believe this is a Sprucianum, it's a Thematophyllum Sprucianum baby. This is variegated. Uh, more silver cloud or mami. Hamalamina, this is a yellow variegated one. I guess this place has some crazy rare plants. <laughs> Look at this. This looks like, oh my god, this is an Aglonema Diamond Bay, if I'm not wrong. Some of my favorite Aglonemas. And they come variegated. I did not, did not know that that is a thing. Oh my god. <laughs> I actually really love this plant when in its green form. I propagated many of these. They look so classic, they're easy to care for, they bring me so much calm. And yeah. <laughs> Hamalomina. There's quite a lot of them here. So they are definitely gonna be the next it plant. This is the Amplicinum variegata. We saw the silver one earlier on. Very pretty sword-like leaves. And that here, this is a massive Bilitai Variegata. This is huge, you guys. These guys are very, very expensive now. Oh my gosh, and each leaf is unique. Each leaf is different. I, used, I remember telling someone before, a long time ago, that I did not like these. I prefer the regular 
uh, green form, the Billy Thai. But I'm eating my own words right now. These are amazing. This, I believe, are skin dapses. This is a pretty one. This is a green form, a very classic green skin dapses. I don't see the ID. Um, yeah, very interesting. There's all sorts of skin dapses coming out of the woodworks these days. We don't even know what this is. This is the silver, yeah, this, uh, sorry, the platinum. There's quite a lot of them coming into the market, you guys. Be on a watch out for them. They're the next, they're the next it plant. Yeah, this is the skin depth. This is a uh, tattoo over here. 800,000. This is quite pricey. It's a bit frosted looking. I don't know why they call it a tattoo though. I don't see any tattoos on them. <laughs> There's a Jose Buono, the new leaf. This I believe is definitely a uh, anthurium hybrid. Oroquinum. I know these are rare plants, but I see them everywhere in nurseries. <laughs> So, I don't know. I used to be surprised by see, at seeing them, but nowadays it's just quite common to me. I don't know. I guess when you're around plants for so much, they just become kind of kind of not so rare anymore. This is the Papillinum, I believe, and Luxurians. This is the Papillinum at something, I'm not sure. I'm getting there. I'm getting my Anthuriums uh, right soon. <laughs> I'm not very good at them. This is Anthurium Christa. Crystal X Warrock, Crystallinum X Warrockinum. This is very interesting. Huh. Yeah, so Indonesia is really well known for hybridizing anthuriums. In case you are not aware, that is a Cebu Blue that is climbing up a wall, getting bigger and bigger. I have a video on these that I'm gonna link up above. So check out the video on the Cebu Blue. This is a what is this? Uh, I want to say. What is this? I don't know. This is a probably Monstera, not a Peru, or maybe it is. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, this is very interesting. I don't know what this is. It caught my eye though. It's very classic green, but look at the, the leaves, the veins on these. This is quite unreal. I don't know what this is. There's a lot of plants that actually we don't know that are probably going to become the next it plant because as you know, plant trends do change. This is a pretty one. And that is a Philodendron longiloba. Is that what it is? No, sorry, no, hang on. Longi longilobatum. That's what it is. Very cute though. I do like their sword like shape. Very interesting. Some Edensoniae, variegated. Uh, Monstera marmorata. This is the Aurea Monstera. I quite like these actually. This is. <laughs> I'm gonna add this to my wish list. This is quite pretty. It's like a, a dragon shape, but also very arrow like. Yeah, this is the Anthurium cla Climate. Climate. <laughs> climate. I can't remember the name, but we did. We showed this plant before. Very pretty. This is definitely for aeroid collectors. Not everyone is into this plant. More variegated monsteras just over here. Some varicosums back there. Let me come around. I'm almost done, you guys. Bear with me. This is the Philodendron gigas. And I made a mistake in my last plant tour because I called this a Milano chrysum. And I'm so sorry I called you Milano. But you can see why they look very similar, but different, of course. If I see this carefully, actually, this, the least sparkles. Do you see the sparkle or is it just me? There's like silver glitter on them. Very interesting texture. Very, very nice. Definitely on my wish list too. So at some point after my business take off, after I finish moving, sell down, maybe sometime next year, I will start buying plants again. But right now I'm doing a good job controlling myself from buying plants because I just, I'm trying to even sell the ones that I have. I cannot handle that many plants. That is a really beautiful elbow variegata. This is a pretty one. Look at the variegation. Good job. And not many crisping tips. Of course, with every variegated monster, you're going to get some crisping tips, but this is really well maintained. Obliqua here. Hello, little one. This is on my wish list too. Look at the price now. It's fallen. It's not as expensive as before. And there is someone that I said I would love to buy an obliqua from. She's a collector of obliqua. She's got many of these. 
but I will contact her again maybe sometime next year because I don't know, I just spent a lot of money on my house, on the new house. So if you're watching this, just know that I'm coming for your oblique one next year. <laughs> this is a uh, Monstera Silk Tipacana, El Salvador. This is on my wish list too. This looks really pretty when it's big, when it's vining. But look at the silver on these. This is really, really beautiful. And also it's a Monstera, so gotta have them all, right? <laughs> this is the Philodendron Glad Hands. Very interesting, not that expensive actually. I was expecting it to be more. Really, really cute. Look at the land, the lakes here. <laughs> and this is a uh, Monstera Edensone Variegata. This is a good price, you guys. Very good price, but it's sold. Very, very good deal. This is the newest leaf, so. Yeah, this is a Emidrium, it's supposed to be Zippelanium, but someone told me it's not. This is not supposed to be the Zippelanium. I believe this is a misnomer. This should have been, I believe, the, the regular green form, Emidrium medium, I think. Don't, don't quote me on that though. This is a Adansonia that is yellow variegated. Can you imagine how expensive that would be? Oh my goodness. This is a Philodendron, Ah, and it's sold. This is a... It says Aldi here, I don't know what it... Maybe this is a person who is selling this plant? Yeah, so I, th I guess maybe they uh, take on some of the home growers' plants and sell them here for them. So that would be a really good business plan actually, if they can provide a platform for people to sell their plants. This is a uh, pink princess and I believe they call this the marble or the splash. There's some Milanos here, of course, um, or maybe not. Maybe this is a hybrid. I want to say maybe this is a hybrid. I don't know. It doesn't. Does it say here? Oh, this is a Milano Chrysum, you guys. False alarm. But the veins on these are very, very pronounced for a Milano. This is very different from the one that I have that I am doing a propagation video on. This is a pretty Milano. And one thing with Milano Chrysums is that they all are different. You have your narrow form, and these are the Raptor. I guess um, when I did a video before, I was like, nah, this looks like a raptor claw. And I'm finally given the plant ID right here. Thank you. <laughs> this is why every plant shop should have plant IDs, because your customers can learn so much about plant species. This is a Haltonianum. Halt Haltonianum, I guess that's how you say it. Very cute. Look at that. Very, very cute. <sighs> All of these are in my wish list. Hmm, it looks like a sword, right? <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna be coming around this middle aisle and back. So bear with me, I'm almost done. This is a really beautiful plant. I believe this is a cycad. Could be wrong. Pretty, look at that, and at the top here, right here at the top. Look at this symmetry, this is so nice. Oh my god, I, this is probably the Dion Ideal and it looks good from so many different angles you guys. Look at it, it's like a sculpture. <laughs> oh my gosh, you love them. And down here we have some white knight, if I'm not a princess. White knight, sorry. The princess has longer leaves. Yeah, this is the princess. A lot of you guys have called out to me, sorry this is the pink but it comes white as well. Because in my previous video I called the white princess a white knight. And a lot of you guys called me out for it. Sorry. This right here. Oh uh, yeah, so it's a Xanthosoma lindenia. I guess we showed this uh, adult plant earlier in the video. So it is a Xanthosoma. Uh, let me see what else. This is a Syngonium chiapensi. If I'm not wrong, yes it is. And that is the price in case you're interested to know. <laughs> this is so asking to be propagated. And I really love the leaves. Look at that. It's camera is not even going to focus for it because it actually looks blurry not because of the fault of the camera it is a really blurry fuzzy looking plant <laughs> some skindapsis uh, turbii this is the dark form this is the moonlight and i believe some of these are the species sumatra this is the uh, skindapsis lucens skindapsis something okay. this uh, moonlight and let me see what else is there. This is so pretty too. I believe this is a Raphidophora. Uh, let me see. 
Oh no, hang on. Is this Amidrium's Diplanium Silver? What the hell? I've never heard of this before. And the price is crazy. <laughs> that is interesting. I did not know that these came... Or maybe this is just the Amidrium Silver, but I don't think this is the Zipolianium. Because if it is the Amidrium Medium Silver, I do have that. But the release actually round, unless you let them get mature, then they become these uh, fenestrated and split leaves. But I could be wrong, I don't know. Maybe this is, is an, another species entirely. So, <laughs> Anthurium pedatoradiatum, is it? Yes, I killed one, I bought another one that is slowly growing, but yeah, this is a, a struggle plant for me for a while, but it is pretty nonetheless. And it gets huge, by the way, this can get massive. These are a lot of anthuriums over here, a lot of hybrids. I'm not gonna go into details, I'm not an anthurium person. They're all beautiful, don't get me wrong. I'm just not, not an aeroid person. No, I love them, but I'm not an expert. There are some plants up here, which I'm not going to show you, I guess. It's a beautiful um, Monstera Aurea. We're starting to lose daylight. See, the sun is coming down. So I'm gonna be ending this video soon as I finish this one last owl. This is a philodendron at above one C and with the underside. Pretty very easy to grow. Little baby mayo eyes. Let me see, am I missing anything else? I think I may be done. This baby varicosums. They're so cute when they're little tiny plants. And they grow really fast. It'll take them about a year to get to the full adult size. Okay, so I think I'm done, you guys. So this is what the place looks like at night time. It is super quiet. Of course, it's a little bit more packed on weekends, but I want to remind you guys to please practice mask wearing and social distancing at this time as we observe um, yeah, social distancing. There are some golden potos, Epipremnum aureum, and it's full glory. That's starting to fenestrate, really pretty. And then back here we have actually a few more plants. This is a beautiful alocasia. I believe this is a mac, probably not a macorrhiza, very gala. This is a little bit mint looking. It's not full white. This is a pretty caladium. I've got a little one of these. There's a lot of caladiums here. This is very, very pretty. Look at how they shine in the light, the night light. There's a Thamatophyllum by Pinodifidum variegata. That's a massive Pothos epipremnum mandula. Look at how big those leaves are. You can't see and I can't get closer. I'm so sorry. There are things in the way. But believe me, those are bigger than my hands. Melanochrysum there, Scandapsis shingling up. This is really pretty. Really, really pretty. Very peaceful evening. Look at those maiden hair ferns there. They're just having the time of their lives. <laughs> and this caladium here. That's new growth right here, new fronds. <laughs> Welcome. And that's the body. This is the wide uh, leaf variety, not leaf fronds. <laughs> But they come in many shapes, these maiden hair ferns. They just need to be watered every day. That's, that's the only thing. You cannot miss watering. Anthuriums. That's Magnificum down there. Let me come around here. And this is a Philodendron Warzowiskii. Ah, they can get massive. Very, very cute. That's, I believe, a Monstera, maybe an Acuminata or a school. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's very pretty. Look at those big leaves with just a little bit of fenestrations. And that's a variegated something. I don't know if this is going to show up. Let me zoom in. Very interesting. But I have a feeling this is a very pest prone plant. There's some plants down here. This is a Syngonium. Hang on, I'm zoomed out. Okay, <laughs> much better. Some alocasia down there. Syngonium. These are very beautiful syngonium. I believe this is the syngonium botic. I guess this is the first time I'm doing a plant tour at night. Huh. How interesting. This is a really... Oh my god, it's fuzzy. 
It's got fuzzy undersides. And what is this? I want to. I don't know what this is. This looks like a fern, like a kadaka fern, but I really don't know, man. This is cute. I really love shaking its hands because it does have very, very beautiful fuzzy undersides and shiny leathery top. That's a tomato. That's a cordyline. Sorry, not cordyline. Um, Costas. I really love their spiral look from up above. Pretty. Look at that. There's um, a lot of staghorn ferns here. They do really well here. They're very happy here. And this place is just so much fun. Imagine this place with like live music and things like that. Very beautiful. It is so peaceful here tonight and I hope that the uh, background music doesn't cause me some copyright issues <laughs> but this is looking pretty look at it, the lights here oh my god this is the most romantic place I've been in a very long time uh, that. oh man Let's look at the field, see what it looks like. Oh man, this is a really nice staycation, I guess. I have a long drive back to my home after this because we are in East Jakarta and I live in a town west of Jakarta. So I have to drive through the city to get home. So let me turn back around, look at that. Whoa, oh, this is actually a pretty good venue for weddings. Can you imagine? Like a very intimate wedding right here with that house in the background with, uh, with a ceremony here with like a, a white tent. <laughs> very pretty, impressive space. And this is pretty new, by the way. They opened, I think, after the pandemic. So let me come around, see what it looks like from the other angles. Very pretty. Oh my gosh, I'm in another world. I've been carried into another world and I'm liking it. So thank you so much for coming along. Oops, there's people there. Whoop. <laughs> let me move the camera away. So thank you guys for coming along with me on this very beautiful day and this very beautiful space. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagation, I'll try my best to get back to you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.